Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I am super duper excited about this one because it involves a lot of beauty products, makeup in particular, but um, also because all these things are kind of a long time coming. I am so fortunate as a beauty blogger to receive a lot of press releases, you know, introducing new products, samples to try. But realistically, there's something about going to the store, feeling super hyped up, you know, swatching all the products on the back of your hand and with all the tissues and, and then bringing them to the counter and be like, charge it, you know. There's something about that that's really exciting and satisfying. So I went shopping, I bought stuff, here are the things you might be interested in. And uh, they're mostly high-end products. I think there's one... There's one particular item in here that is a PR scent, but I want to include it because I think it's going to be a really hot item and I have good feelings about it. So I'm going to throw that in here at the end. But um, yeah, get comfortable. We're getting very, very spendy in this video. I thought we'd start off with some foundations and concealers that I picked up. And um, there's a whole backstory behind this, but to make it short, I wanted something that I could put on my face early in the morning, like 6 a.m., have it last a good portion of the day, and not look too terrible by the time I get home, which is usually about 5 or 6 p.m., so that's a good 10 to 12 hours. For those days where I'm not doing anything special, but I need to be out for a long time, I don't want to wear a full face of foundation because that's really not great for your skin, not for so many hours, not consecutively Monday to Friday. So I wanted something high coverage, quick, easy to use, and last a good amount of the day. So I went hunting for concealers and turned up super disappointed because a lot of the brands, even the ones with great formulations, don't come in a wide enough range of colors or even undertones. So there was a lot of buying and then returning and then buying again, but this is what I ended up with thus far. And the first one I have here is the Vichy Derma Blend Fluid Corrective Foundation for Sensitive Skin. This is meant to last 16 hours and I believe this is only um, claimed when set with their particular setting powder which I don't currently have. This is a high coverage bare skin feel with a matte finish, hypoallergenic and oil free I believe. So it's meant to be quite skin friendly and formulated for those who are going through um, skin treatments or are trying to cover tattoos or dark marks or scarring. So quite a co corrective type of product in here. And I have it in uh, the liquid formulation in the shade Opal. Um, they do come in a stick or at least they used to but I think now they've made the sticks into compacts and I wasn't crazy about a compact so I decided to pick up the fluid formulation instead. Then a couple of weeks ago I somehow ended up with Too Faced, born this way. Super popular, super trendy right now. I have seen 101, maybe plus 5 on top of that, uh, reviews for this. And I was really on the fence because, I don't know, I feel like these high coverage foundations are very trendy right now. Everyone wants as much coverage as they can put on their face. And um, it's just kind of trendy and a lot of brands are coming out with this type of product. And I was like, oh, I don't need something that full coverage. But I was swatching it in Sephora and they really had some great shades for those with warmer undertones. Um, so I ended up with this one. This is Ivory in the Born This Way formulation. I have not used this yet, but I do look forward to trying it out. Um, Color-wise, it seems pretty good. Um, again, haven't tried it on my full face as of yet. But seems to be very lightweight, which is what um, I'm hoping it will be. So that is the Too Faced. Then, two concealers. I have a couple. I actually just went to the store today to run some errands and returned the Cover FX concealer. It was too thick, you know, just didn't feel right on my skin. And um, I would have to mix it with something else to make it more fluid and comfortable. It was just too much work. So while I was in there, I was looking around and then saw the Kat Von D Tattoo Concealer, which I know was really popular a couple of years ago when it first came out. And I swatched it and it felt very, very creamy and seems comfortable. So I have this in the shade Light 18 um, for the Kat Von D. And this is quite a lot of product for comparatively not that much money. So in that sense, seems to be affordable, um, seems quite 
medium to full coverage versus the cover effects which seems to just go on quite full coverage to begin with definitely creamier and um, shade selection seems all right we'll see how this goes on my face once i start using it the kat von d tattoo concealer by the way you guys as you're watching this if you have used any of these products and you love it or hate it or you got something to say about it leave me a comment down below and let me know give me a little preview you know uh, because all this stuff are new to me Next then, I did go to MAC because one of you guys suggested just go to MAC. Of course, right? Um, you know, one of my complaints was that they didn't have enough colors and of course MAC is well known for their great color section. And I used to be a MAC girl um, quite a number of years ago. I was really into the products and I kind of fell off the wagon and tried different things and haven't had a chance to go back in a long time. But I met this super sweet girl who worked at, let me see if I can get this straight, um, the Granville location where you get off the sky train and there's a mac pop-up shop right across from the bay right when you get out of the sky train and she was so sweet i think her name is tamira and um, i'm definitely going back to see her because i have some back to mac stuff to return and get a couple of cute lipsticks but she helped me with um, finding a concealer so she recommended the mac mineralized concealer i have this in the shade nw20 um, I usually would wear an NC20, but I think she recommended the NW just so we can go around the eyes and be a little bit more brightening. We tried it out in the store in the big mirror, and I think it looked pretty good. It's not too cakey, not too heavy, but still gives me that fresh appearance, which I really love. You know, I love wearing something like the MAC Face and Body Foundation that you guys know um, that I use all the time. So this gives me a similar effect, but in a concealer form with about medium coverage, maybe just a tiny bit more. Um, and again, color seems to be great when we tried it out in the uh, store. Next then, further concealing. Um, from Sephora, this was also a recommendation by a sales um, assistant there. She recommended the Sephora Bright Future Gel Serum Concealer. This is, I would say, in the same realm as um, the Urban Decay, I believe it's called Naked Skin Concealer, as well as the NARS Creamy Concealer. They're both kind of very fluid, as is this one, and this is formulated to be a gel consistency, very comfortable, even slightly moisturizing, but still with good coverage. Um, this comes in just a simple wand style. So you kind of dot this on and blend it away. I love that this one has a lot of colors to choose from. I am here in the shade Custard number 07. Now because I was in and out of Sephora quite a number of times in the past month, I happened upon this palette from Becca and I wasn't going to get another palette, I have a lot of them, but when I was swatching it, the consistency and texture of this Becca eyeshadow palette was just incredible. I am inclined to say that I've never felt anything quite like this and this definitely goes on the um, top ranking of the best textured matte eyeshadows I have ever swashed or used or anything like that so I kept thinking about it and then today when I was back I did actually pick it up so this is the Becca um, ombre nudes eyeshadow palette but of course as you can see from these beautiful matte shades you can probably also use them for eyeliner or even use them on your eyebrows as well so beautiful array of shades and while you're looking at them in the pan right here they don't look all that different when you swatch them and put them on your skin there is a good variety um, in the color spectrum even though they're all kind of beautiful nudie browns here beautiful beautiful texture super creamy very blendable hope that they last i will have to try them out this is the becca ombre eyes again and i think this was quite affordable for what it is and uh, just incredible textures i couldn't stop thinking about it so i did go back and get it then in terms of eyeshadows let's just keep on going um while i was at mac doing some shopping and um, i picked up two eyeshadows keep forgetting that mac does these in the pan format and this in the pan only runs you 12 bucks per eyeshadow which i think is pretty spectacular for what they are. Um, I have here the MAC eyeshadow in the color Floof, which is an old time favorite. Um, I stopped using it after a while. I think I either finished it or lost it or broke it. One of those. Mm, I don't remember. But Floof was very beautiful and it's that, it's that Stila Kitten MAC Naked Lunch type of super highlighting shade. So I picked this up again in the pan form. And then I also picked up a transition color for blending eyeshadow, which is wearing as a single shade all over. This is Max Malt eyeshadow. 
Then, um, in a pan format again, I also picked up a MAC Sheer Tone Blush. This is in the shade Peaches, which I thought was super duper cute. But um, the Sun Associate recommended this for something that brings a little bit of warmth to the skin without being super pink. Um, I think this could be one that you could wear all year round, but I'm definitely loving some MAC Ravishing, which has that orangey tone to it. So I think this would go great with that lipstick that I love. Then, going back to probably one of my very first MAC products and still a favorite I keep thinking about even though I haven't had it in my collection for a few years now. This is MAC's Groundwork Paint Pot and um, I feel very happy to have it back in my life because this is such a staple product. I can wear this on its own as a single wash, which I often do. I could amp it up with another deeper eyeshadow or a lighter color as a highlight. This is a great medium tone shade for my skin tone and so beautiful, easy to work with. You know, there are a couple of other cheaper alternatives that are similar in the color, but the consistency, the texture, just doesn't feel the same as a MAC Paint Pot. And gotta love this. I picked this up again when I was concealer hunting and chatting with Tamara in the shop. So she was great with that. And we had a little moment bonding over some old school MAC makeup. Next then, going back to Too Faced, um, while I was getting the foundation, I also saw the Too Faced La Creme Color Drench Lip Cream Lipstick, which I keep looking at because their colors are so beautiful and girly. I'm wearing one of them right now. It is this color called Taffy. Yes, Taffy. Much more of that super girly, super pink color, but um, very moisturizing when I put it on, very smooth. I'm not sure if it's going to be continuously moisturizing, but the first time wearing it right now on my lips feels pretty comfortable. We'll have to report back to you, but I know the La Creme lipsticks are favorites of some people out there. I almost forgot, there's one more foundation I need to throw in here that I purchased. And this was a return and then I purchased this instead of the previous product which had been the Lancome Taunt Miracle Foundation, which I loved um, in terms of the formulation. I love the way it made the skin look. It was just something super unique and beautiful. But they decided to revamp their color spectrum and the color I had loved and matched me so well was no longer there. It, it's gone now. So I had to set up for something else. So I returned the Lancome and instead decided to pick up the Yves Saint Laurent Touche Cloth Foundation. This one is in the shade BD10, although I could also probably wear BD30 or B30 is another one they swatch on my skin. That just gives me a bit more warmth. Probably better for the summer season. Um, this one comes with a pump. It was very hot a couple of maybe a year or two ago when it first came out. I have previously sampled this, like I asked for a little sample of it and tried it out for a couple of times and it did feel great and look pretty good. However, I haven't used it long term, so I don't know. Let me know if you've tried it though. I know it's quite a popular product. Next one is something else that really, I couldn't stop thinking about it after I swatched it in Sephora the first time. Same thing with that Becca eyeshadow palette. Um, this is the Laura Mercier Lip Parfait Creamy Color Balm and in the color Amaretto Swirl. And they've got, you know, quite a number of colors available. But I love how this just smooths over the skin so beautifully. It is hydrating in terms of the way it feels, but it's got good color coverage. It's definitely a medium coverage lipstick opacity. You know, if you love lipstick, I think you really love this. Um, you know, it's definitely not sheer. It's got good color, good punch, but feels great and would be a nice one, I think, for the fall, winter, drier season. Couldn't stop thinking about it after I swatched it the first time. I probably swatched this three times in different occasions before I decided just to pick it up. The um, Laura Mercier Le Parfait over here. And the last thing I really want to show you guys is a PR Send, but I want to include it because, again, I have swatched it. I haven't used it on my face yet, but I've swatched it and the formula is just so creamy smooth and I know these type of high coverage, slightly powdery, dry down foundations are very popular at the moment. But this creamy consistency just kind of blew me away in that sense. So I must show you. This is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. I have three shades here. Um, 
I need to actually try them on face and tell you which one is best. But I think this one in 117 was my previous match in the regular HD foundation. Now this is the Ultra HD, reformulated for 4K video. Um, we'll see how this goes, but the consistency, texture, super creamy, super, super blendable. And of course, you gotta know that Makeup Forever makes a great color spectrum. So. I'm pretty sure most of you guys will find a good match, if not a very, very close match. So this wraps up my very extensive haul video. It's kind of long, isn't it? But I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you have questions and comments or you want a review to be bumped up um, on any of the products that you have seen in this video, just leave me a comment down below or chat with me. Let me know through social media. And all my links, of course, as always, is down below in the information bar. Hope that you're having a beautiful day. I'm ready to head off to bed now. Yes, we're filming at night. Can you tell? Color's a little bit different, isn't it? But um, have a great evening or morning, wherever that you are. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.